I, I've been laughing ever since I arrived here because the sense of humor is still here and this is Ireland and Ireland is the same as it ever was. I was really dreadfully afraid. I heard of the enormous changes and I heard of uh, uh, things are different now. It's the same old Ireland. And I, 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 I can describe to you some Maya glyphs and we'll be looking at some Mexican Western Mexican rock art, and we'll describe some other things, but I can't describe my happiness. Uh, uh, my, my happiness of being here, especially with my family member. Okay, okay, Garrity is a member of the family, and it's so touching to get together with old friends, which are like brothers, and I, I miss them so much after all these years. It's such a great pleasure to be here, but I'm not even beginning to explain my happiness because I can't do it. I might be able to, to, to explain some things about Maya glyphs and what's going on in Mexico. Mainly, there's three, there's three great timelines, three great calendrical or chronological systems. Um, one is the Western Europe, Um, Maya, uh, or American, Mexican, and India, right, um, uh, great time systems of the Hindu scriptures, Hindu cosmology. These are three great time systems, enormously great time systems, and they all come together on December 21st, 2012 which is going to be a great, great, wonderful day. And the first thing I want to do before anything else is dismiss the nonsense and hysteria about doomsday. There is no doomsday. Forget about it. The first thing we have to look at is what happened at the last calendar ending event. The Mayas count 5,200 years at a time. And there's a lot of speculation going on about this December 21st, 2012, and it starts from the Maya calendar. But the doomsday idea is a distortion and misinterpretation of the real Maya calendar. What happens in Maya mythology, the last time this happened was 3,114 BC. And a bunch of very interesting things happen around the world at this time. One of them is that corn first gets domesticated. They start planting corn. It's the beginning of agriculture in Mexico. Now the mythology says that there were previous creations of humanity that didn't work. But when they made humanity from corn, it worked. So this mythologically is a remembrance of the domestication of corn. Now, that wasn't too bad an idea. Because with the domestication of corn, we get writing, we get civilization, they start from... So, uh, uh, there was no tragedy that happened. In fact, it's an advancement. It's an evolution. So the Maya concept of, of time is evolution. It goes forward. And when you keep the Maya calendar, there's a lot of day keepers. And I'll explain to you something about day keeping, which is a very interesting phenomenon. But it's always an advancement and evolution. Time is used as a means for advancement. So in the Maya concept of time, there is no doomsday scenario. The doomsday scenario comes from the Aztecs, 
we're brilliant people. I'm not criticizing the Aztecs. But they're very funny people in that they have a 52-year. Their time runs out in 50, every 52 years. And whether or not another 52 years begins is up in the air. They feel that the world is going to end even after 52 years. So when they look at the Maya calendar and look at 5,200 years, oh, the world's definitely going to come to an end. And in fact, they, have, they, they predict earthquakes and famine are going to destroy uh, uh, the world. And that's fixed in their head. It is not a Maya concept. Let's look at the Maya date for August 13th, 3114, and see what the Maya actually says. Here it is. Um, here's the day arrived at. Um, the, last the last time the day arrived at is for sun. This time, this December 21st, 2012, the day arrived at will be for sun. However, the Aztec misinterpret that and they call uh, the last civilization, the fourth sun. This civilization, they call it the fifth sun, and the fifth sun is going to be the end of the world. Ain't going to happen. Because this glyph here needs to be understood. This glyph is called an alatun, and this alatun means 63 million years. 63 million years. So the Maya begin by saying, <laughs> this is called the introductory glyph, the SID. It's an introductory glyph to the initial uh, uh, date count. And it says, in the great count of time, they count every single day, they give this date. But this glyph alone represents 63, over 63 million years. So what the Maya do does is put time in a, con a big context. In 63 million years, then they come down to the day, and then they give the month. And here is um, here is uh, Unal's periods of 20 days. Um, this is called a tune. Um, these are different periods of days which have all zeroed out. This is called a back tune. It's a period of about 400 years. There are 13 periods of about 400 years. It amounts to 5,200 years to arrive at this, but they start out with telling you that this is a great, magnificent, monumental count of time in the context of 63 <coughs> million years. There's another inscription at Kova, uh, which is more detailed. This is the one at Kova. This is the largest number that has ever been engraved on stone. The, this number represents this, which is millions of billions. I don't know what that is. It's, it's more than telephone numbers. This is the real context of time. And they go backward and they go forward. And uh, the Alatun, the Alatun is here. And this represents 63 million years. But this represents 13 of Alatuns. Think of that. And they're only getting started. So by the time the artist reaches here, he has reached this number of years of 365.24 days. But the only reason he stops here is he says, I got more time, but I don't have more stone. <laughs> so so he, he says, I can't describe the amount of time that we have here. 
Uh, uh, so this is the real concept of time. And here we have the four, the day comes to four sun, again. And, and, and they give the phase of the moon on that day. <laughs> so how do they, this was written uh, maybe about 700, 800 AD. But yet they're giving you the phase of the moon back at 3,114 BC. These are pretty smart cookies. Uh, uh, and this is the real concept of time. This is infinite time, and this is comparable to modern experimental cosmological time. That's why the Maya calendar is a scientific calendar, because science needs a calendar that describes the kind of nature we're beginning to perceive, a nature that, that is infinite, infinitely in the past, going infinitely to the future. And uh, the, uh, there's a current model of the universe that's a cyclical universe that repeats itself. And it continues to repeat itself infinitely and has been infinitely. So the Mayans are very, very modern in their concept of time. And they have the first scientific calendar. And December 21st, 2012, it is rumored that the Mexican government is going to declare the Maya calendar an official calendar. They're going to keep the Gregorian calendar, but they're going to recognize the Maya calendar as official. In other words, if you write a legal document using Maya glyphs, that will be officially recognized. Uh, that will be the first of scientific calendar on the planet. Our calendar is not really scientific, uh, but the Maya calendar is. So there will be the first country on the planet to have a scientific calendar calendar, the interesting thing is that day that the Mexican government is being urged to declare the calendar, the Maya calendar, an official calendar of Mexico, will be December 21st. <laughs> and winter solstice. And the Maya calendar begins 3,114 BC. Well, that would be a good date for the building of Newgrange. So we have this remarkable coincidence, uh, synchronicity, a remarkable synchronicity that Newgrange is built when the Maya calendar begins. So this 2012 will be a simultaneous celebration for Mexico, and we hope that the Irish government will be the first government to congratulate Mexico. And, and, and recognize this beautiful synchronicities. And synchronicities, speaking about synchronicities, here is the Chinese characters. <coughs> and, and this, uh, uh, seventh century AD, the Chinese decided to map the known world. So they had to give all the countries Chinese names. Now this is the 7th century that they gave Ireland these Chinese characters. This character is very interesting to me to love. But this character is the Easter lily. Oh, how do they know in the 7th century? It took 1916, the last century, where we got the Easter lily became a symbol because it's white and orange and green, the Catholics, the Protestants, the peace between them. Uh, but in the seventh century, uh, <laughs> but this is the prophetic character of writing. James Joyce used to think that, that books are prophetic instruments. And, and, and this is an extremely prophetic in that the Chinese happened to pick the Easter lily as a symbol of Ireland. And this Chinese character is really cute because <coughs> uh, I, I, I do a lot of books that don't get published. I think my best books don't get published. And one of the books I've written is Hidden Maya, which cracks the code of the Maya hand signs. 
It's a very interesting book. I don't see it here. Nobody, oh, she's got it. Do you have it? Can I see it? Oh, it's at home. If anybody's got it. Uh, and, and, and does anybody have, oh, there is the hidden Maya. Yeah. Uh, um, everybody thought, there's Pakal. Everybody thought he's sinking into the Wonder World. No. It's facing north. And to the Maya, the ancestors, heaven is in the north. He's going north. He's rising. He's not sinking. I keep on telling them this. Uh, this is the sarcophagus, uh, the cover of Pakal's sarcophagus. Uh, but I'm getting off the subject. Uh, this is Ireland. But I, I want to talk about this character. I, I wrote this book on hand signs. Uh, and I used... I said, these hand signs are very important because, you see, the hand sign is in the geometric center of the composition. And this happens frequently. So I've got to crack these hand signs, and I don't know how to do it. Then I come across an interesting idea. The American Indians have a tradition that they got their hand signs from Mexico. And the Apaches and Comanches, those tribes near Mexico, are the most proficient in hand signing. Aha! I used the American Indian hand signs, which are well known, and cracked the code of the Maya hand signs. But uh, this book is big in Italy. They translated it into Italian. It's big in Italy, but nobody else pays attention to it. But they will. They'll get it after a while. Um, in fact, the last time I got a royalty check, um, my Italian sales are bigger than any other sales. Uh, uh, nobody buys my book in the United States, but people buy my book in Ireland and England. But the biggest sales are in Italy. I'm very proud of that. I'm big in Italy. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, does anybody have the, the, the Stones of Time? I, I, I'd like to see you copy that. Uh, 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 For years I've been trying to put these two books together. I know they're connected. But then I figured it out this year. Uh, um, the Maya calendar is right in synchronicity with Newgrange. It's dead on together. And so there is a very deep relationship. I'm going to look at some rock inscriptions and uh, from Mexico, and you're going to think uh, uh, that you're in Ireland. But I swear we're in Mexico. Because uh, these two do. Meet up. I meant to say this first. I'm to deliver a message from the indigenous people of Mexico to the people of Ireland, and it's in la la che. That means you are one of us or we are another you. You are another us. And I think by the end of this talk, we'll have a connection with Mexico that, that we've never dreamed of before. Uh, Mark, did you finish the Chinese? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant to do this. this. You know, I could be here a week. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> please stay, uh, please stay. This is the Chinese character for the Easter lily, and how they knew in the seventh century this is very prophetic. This is just an interesting hand sign. Uh, uh, this is an interesting uh, Chinese character because I, I did this book on, on Maya hand signs, but I did another book that I never got published. I do these books for myself. Why, why do I have to publish everything? You don't have to publish. I, I love to do books for myself, so I did this whole book on hand signs in, 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 in the Chinese character. Now, this one's interesting. It's got the grasping hand, and this means an object, and this is a picture of the heart. So the, the hand is holding an object to the heart, and this is the patting hand. That's the moving hand. So the hand holds an object to the heart and pats, and the character means love. Uh, uh, that's that character. This is Irando. I'm not too sure of the Chinese pronunciation, but I speak Japanese. Uh, uh, Ireland in Japanese. Irando. 
And those are the Chinese characters for Ireland. An interesting syn synchronicity. Oh, the bottom is do. That means land. Land. So uh, it's the land that loves the Easter lily. <laughs> Seventh century China. This, this synocratis. Okay, you can take them as accidental or, 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 or reality. But there's another curious thing about our three times. Hindu times, Hindu cosmology has a period of um, over 8 billion years. It's called a kalpa. And it's a day and the night in the life of Brahma. Brahma is the lord of time, the creator and the lord of time. And um, Brahma. Did you ever hear the expression Aaron go bra? Yeah. Aaron go bra, Air Ireland forever? That bra, as pointed out by Miles Dillon, Miles Dillon was a fantastic yeah. scholar who said that Gaelic and Sanskrit were once one and the same language. Not related, but one and the same language. What a great mystery that is, because nobody knows how. But it is absolutely fact that Gaelic and Sanskrit are the same. This is such a huge breakthrough. I can't understand why it's not people don't realize that Sanskrit and Gaelic are the same. So this is a fantastic relationship that's kind of ignored, but it's very important to me. And the other thing is that interesting that the Gaelic, if we look at New Grain, in Gaelic, it, it's Bruna Boynia. It directly relates. Now, I don't. I'd like to talk to this to somebody later. Does the Gaelic language go all the way back to the construction of Newgrange? Gdalth means darkness, and in fact, Dalth is tor towards a setting sun at, at, at winter solstice, and it means darkness. Bru Naboinya, Bru means womb. But I didn't, I didn't know, when I wrote the Boyne Valley Vision, in the Boyne Valley Vision, I say that this is womb, a uh, womb imagery here. This is womb imagery. Later on, I find out that Bru, in fact, means womb. So the language must be, could be the same as the language of the builders. Uh, and we have many, many incidences of, of, of this. Um, also, when I wrote the Boyne Valley Vision, um, I didn't go to a single mound and observe the sun coming in. I just figured out that these are solar constructs. I didn't actually test it in the field until Stones of Time. When I wrote Stones of Time, uh, that was going out in the field and testing it. But the Boyne Valley Vision uh, uh, just states that they're astronomically aligned. It doesn't go out and prove it. It doesn't go out and, and, and show it. So um, uh, Anthony Murphy calls this the Boyne Valley Revision. And I'm wondering why is he calling it the Boyne Valley Revision? I'm not going to revise anything. Um, but now I understand why. I'm in the same position in Mexico. It took me two and a half years. I've been in Mexico two and a half years. It took me two and a half years to get it through my head that, in general, the pyramids and temples of Mexico are astronomically aligned and they have cosmological meanings. They, they outline cosmological principles. All of them. Show me one that isn't. That's the problem. These days in Mexico, every month, there's a discovery of a astronomical alignment of a pyramid or a temple. But every month, they treat it as an oddity. Oh, isn't this wonderful? 
It aligns, uh, uh, this is an astronomical one. Then at Chichen Itza, at Equinox, they have a snake uh, done by shadow. Now these things aren't done overnight. It's like looking at Newgrange. When the sun came into Newgrange, it should have been obvious that it wasn't somebody's whim saying, hey, let's, let's align this to winter solstice. Uh, no, there's got to be a tradition. There's got to be a tradition of that. Well, it's the same thing in Mexico. The, 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 the snake design in the pyramid uh, uh, that's done with light and shadow is not a whim. Uh, I, I'm, I'm convinced now, it took me two and a half years to be convinced that that, that is the procedure, the principle is to build, to design pyramids and temples on astronomical basis with cosmological meaning. Or just show me one that isn't. Then this year, there's been a whole bunch of discoveries that, that have come out this year, including, I come across 1932, this is in a Spanish report from Spain, but I'm in Mexico, I come across this very interesting uh, report. The pyramid, the Great Pyramid of Giza is astronomically aligned to the equinox. And it has an effect, it's called Effecto Relampago. It's called the lightning effect. And on equinox day, there's a sudden shift in shadow from one side of the pyramid to the other, which causes a lightning effect. And uh, I saw this photograph from 1932, and it clearly shows the shot one side dark and one side light, and a kind of a lightning effect that happens when it switches over. So if you look at the back of the US dollar bill, it's got the pyramid and it's got the light <laughs> coming out in the eye. Finally, I, I realize what it means. But now, uh, first it was Newgrange, and then it goes to La Crue, and then we discover that in general, uh, uh, megalithic structures are astronomically aligned. Then, this year in Mexico, after two and a half years, I finally come to the conclusion that mounds and pyramids in Mexico are astronomically aligned as well. It me uh, now I'm almost ready to say that ancient structures, the more ancient they are, the more likely they are to be astronomically aligned. That's worldwide. Uh, uh, th 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 that's a principle, we're almost about to declare that principle. It's not just Ireland. It's not just Ireland and Mexico. We have a huge situation here that we're blindfolded to. We gotta take off the blindfold. <laughs> December 21st, 2012 would be a good time to take off the blindfolds. It is very important to get rid of that doomsday idea. And I'm coming up with this book, uh, uh, Days of Power, that explains daykeeping. But the main thing I want to do is get that book out as soon as possible to get people off that doomsday mentality. Because I believe people affect, we, we're kind of co-creators. If we go along believing it, uh, it's very likely to happen. Um, I, I think that, that December 21st, 2012 is going to be enormously positive, just like the last event was, an, an evolution, a beautiful evolution. So I'd like to see scientific breakthroughs, social breakthroughs, breakthroughs in medicine, uh, uh, more peace, more prosperity, more happiness on the planet. Uh, 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 it, this needs to be reversed. This, this is roller coasting into a disaster. If you think disaster, if you think doom, doomsday, the human mind is powerful. Uh, uh, you may get what, 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 what you visualize. So, main thing I have to do is get rid of that negative doomsday idea because it is not in the Maya glyphs. Uh, here, Here's a site, uh, we're gonna go to this site called Alta Vista, and it's near where we live in Mexico. 
it's only about an hour away from where Rob and I live. Um, and it's a site of, 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 of tremendous spiritual power. And interesting because it's still used today. Um, the Wichols use it, the Kors use it, uh, Christians use it, pagans use it. It's active, it remains active. This is the difference between sites in Mexico and sites here in Ireland. They have a, a, a history of continuous use. This is very valuable to find out uh, rock inscriptions, what they mean, because we have a situation where rock inscriptions are still used by the ordinary people in rituals. And by the way, tomorrow in Mexico, we're doing a very interesting thing. Uh, uh, the Mexicans, when they see Irish rock art, they go wild because they thought they were the only ones in the world. And when they see, I bought over Neil Boyle's uh, film, um, The Secret of the Stones, and they, the Wicholi Indians, had called the rest of the Indians in, and they watched that, they were mesmerized because it shows the rock inscriptions in Newgrange, and they go wild. And I also had copies of my book, um, I bought a, co a copy of each one of my books with me down to Mexico. Uh, so they got to see these books. They go wild when they see these books because it's the same vocabulary. Uh, but in Mexico it's different. The archaeologists in Mexico have deciphered the spiral as a sun symbol. Uh, and, and they deciphered uh, lunar symbols. So we, we have the archaeologists in Mexico have no trouble with astronomical alignments and they have no trouble seeing the stars and the stones. Uh, here, they got a little bit of difficulty with the astronomy. I don't know why, that should change. Uh, but in Mexico, archeologists have no problem, and I love it because they, the archeologists independently came up with the spiral as the sun. And, and, and the archeologists independently come up with many, um, decipherments that are the same as mine. And I love it uh, because there's that harmony. It's, it's two arrows in an inquiry hit the same scientific bullseye. And that's what goes on in Mexico. In Mexico, uh, um, about every month, there's an announcement of some astronomical alignment that has to do with light and shadow. And, uh, and uh, Added to that are some of mine. I'm, I'm, I'm making new, this year was fantastic, starting with Equinox. I'll show you some sundials that, 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 that will surely amaze you. Here's my pal. Um, I work with Jack Roberts as my co-researcher. This is my co-researcher in Mexico, Scott Roberts. <coughs> uh, uh, he's an expert on uh, um, archeological subjects. Uh, I just spoke to him the other day, and he, he reported something that was very curious. There's a mountain called Monkey Mountain. Um, actually, Mono, it, it, in Spanish, Mono means a clay figurine. And this mountain is just full of these clay figurines. But Mono also means monkey, so they call it Monkey Mountain. But and there's a cave up there. And the Mexicans use caves for rituals. Um, but some of the rituals being performed at the cave in Monkey Mountain, this is just last week, um, were used, they said, that it can be very superstitious, to curse people, uh, to make people sick physically. So the cave was being used by what they call brujos, uh, people that use magic, and, and, and people are very afraid of brujos, so they they dynamited the cave. <laughs> Mexican mentality. Um, but Scott Roberts just told me about that. Uh, so we're going to look at Alta Vista, but uh, 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 let's keep it in mind. Tomorrow is winter solstice, and the Wicholi Indians 
and the Cora Indians and other Mexicans are going to Alta Vista and doing ceremonies as they usually do at winter solstice, but in this winter solstice, they're directing it towards Newgrange because they're fascinated. What they think, uh, they think, um, and those glyphs I showed you, it gives that date, August 13th, 3114 BC. But then the script goes on and it describes a recreation of the creation. They know that the world is not created in 3114 BC, but they believe there was a reenactment in 314 BC. So the text reads that in 314 BC, in the east, they placed a stone at the summer solstice sunrise. And then they placed a stone at the summer solstice sunset. And this is somewhere in the east. And then they placed a stone in the summer solstice, at the winter solstice sunset. And the fourth stone was placed on the winter solstice sunrise. And they think that that's Newgrange. So that's why the Mexicans are sending us this greeting. They think that Newgrange is in their mythology. So they, they have a very, very reverence for this material. That's why I can't get, wait to get my books published in Spanish. Uh, um, it, because there, there's a tremendous amount of interest there. So here's a place called Alta Vista. And, and, and um, it's just covered with rock inscriptions. It's mostly known as a healing spot for its sacred waters. The water there is regarded as sacred. They bottle it, they take it home. But if a Mexican is going on a trip, say, to the United States, they go to Alta Vista first to pray. Christians pray there, pagans pray there, and it, it, it's still an act of sight. And it's a wonderful feeling when you see rock art being used uh, uh, ritually by uh, still in use, still active. Uh, and that's a wonderful thing that goes on in Mexico. And also in the part of Mexico where th this, these are, there are 10 house, there are over 10,000 rock inscriptions. That's, that's one of the highest places for rock inscriptions in the world. And let's, let's take a look at some of them. Here's Alta Vista, and um, at Equinox, a beam of light comes and hits that chamber. And that's the place where you're supposed to stand. So the beam of light it says, stand over here. <laughs> that's what I did. Uh, um, this was last, equin uh, last spring Equinox. Um, everybody was supposed to go to Alta Vista, but nobody shows up. So I have to go alone. So I sleep overnight. There's a cougar uh, a roaring in the night. <laughs> I'm sleeping there. I wake up in the morning, and the beam of light comes here. But from I can read the glyphs, and the glyphs are telling me this is an equinox spot. But it's more than an equinox spot. But the glyphs are telling me that it is an equinox, besides uh, other, other dates. Equinox is, is, is prominent. Uh, the water and the rock formations give a, a, an idea of a sacred place. Uh, as soon as you come here, you realize that, that this must be the sacred place. spot that the beam of light tells you to stand, you, you get to look at certain important stones. And this is one of them. At noon, exactly at astronomical midday, this is the gnome who cast a shadow. Oh, I can imitate. 
cast a shadow like this. And exactly, equinox is the middle of the year, exactly at noon, it goes right there. Timing it by watch, the shadow <coughs> hits exactly that spot. Now tomorrow, um, we think that at noon, it's going to hit there. And at the summer solstice, it's going to hit there. We don't know. But the fact that it hits there at noon at equinox <coughs> is definitely a sundial. This curious thing, as soon as I look at it, I said, that's tilted 23 degrees. That's the tilt of the Earth's axis. I think the ancient Maya knew about the tilt of the Earth's axis, axis as well. How the Maya got that information, we don't know. It's one of the great mysteries. That calendar stone that marks millions and billions of years appears in Maya art. There's no build-up. Suddenly they have all this information. There's no development of the Maya calendar. It suddenly appears. So that is a big mystery. Where does it come from? How does all that information suddenly appear with, 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 with no development? doesn't show any development? Where? At, at outer space? Or other? Who? That is a big mystery. The other big mystery is there's no collapse of the Maya empires. There is no collapse. They just disappeared. And they disappeared in some places very quickly. They left the tools. In some places the tools are just left and, and, and the aristocracy left. We, we don't know where they went. Up, down, I don't know. Nobody knows. Uh, um, there is a lot of different theories about what happened to the to the Maya aristocracy, but there's no, no nobody explains it. We know what happened to the Irish aristocracy. We know what the collapse of the Roman Empire. We there's a <coughs> collapse of the Maya uh, Empire. It's a mystery. They they appear suddenly, and they disappear very soon. And, and that is a great mystery, as is the mystery of how do the Hindus, in Hindu cosmology, we have this period of the Kalpa, eight million years, works perfectly with modern cosmology. That's the period in the Big Bang theory or in the inflation theory. That period of eight million years represents the period exactly that it takes the galaxies to form galaxies are forming exactly in a, a period called the Kalpa. But in a period that the Hindus uh, have seen or uh, have recorded, the Hindus record a period of 3 trillion 110 billion years. 3 trillion 110 billion years is Hindu cosmology that's what they say is a year in the life of Brahma that modern scientific cosmology calls a period of the inflation theory it goes from crunch inflation to crunch now the cyclical theory says that it goes from crunch, inflation, crunch, then inflation again, crunch, and that goes on infinitely and has gone on infinitely. So we have an infinite cosmos according to Hindu cosmology and according to modern cosmology. But modern cosmology is using modern technology to arrive at that date. How does a Hindu meditating in a cave in the Himalayas come up with those figures? That is a great mystery to me. I am in fact baffled. So many things have been happening this year that I find completely baffling but wonderful. Um, 
hopefully tomorrow they will be filming <laughs> the first ceremonies uh, leading to 2012. There will be 13 uh, equinoxes and solstices leading to December 21st, 2012. The first one is going to be tomorrow and the it's going to be commemorated by Wacholis and Coras and other Mexicans at this Alta Vista site and we're going to film it. And this will be the first time, this is amazing, Coras and Wacholis are like Catholics and Protestants. It's very hard to get these people together, but we got them together because Ireland brings them together. They are so fascinated by the idea of Newgrange being the winter solstice and, and being built in three, uh, 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 that they tomorrow are going to dedicate their ceremonies to Newgrange. So they're, they're, they're going to be with us tomorrow. And, and tomorrow is going to be the first uh, event of its kind where both in Mexico and in Ireland we are observing a, a solar construction event. So tomorrow's a big historical day for, for a lot of people. This, this is remarkable in that uh, we found a stone, we photographed it before this sundial was found. But you can see the same kind of imagery here. So what we're wondering, is this another sundial? But well, we couldn't find it. We, we, we will. We'll, we'll, we'll find it. We, these rocks don't disappear. But we will find it. But we think that this would be another sundial because it's got the same kind of imagery. And it's got a possible gnomon. Uh, but for some reason, we photographed it. Then when we discovered the sundial, we went back to look for this, and we just couldn't find it. We will. It will just take some time. <coughs> This is a photograph done by Rob Hancock. And, and this shows you how, how many rock inscriptions are, are in the area. They're just all over the place. So Rob goes out to one of his sites, and he comes across this. And as soon as he sees it, the shooting star. And, 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 and uh, you just get the idea of shooting star. And, and it puts the rest of the rock inscriptions in context. But you already know, you can tell. The first day I went to Alta Vista, it was a cloudy day. But I could tell that all the inscriptions are aimed towards the sun and the moon. And, and, and they use shadow devices. Uh, this is, this is um, Rob Hancock's shooting star. Energy coming down from the heavens. This is shaman inscription, glory and energy from, from the heavens. This is a corn god. It's a personification of corn. Um, but this is very popular um, for uh, people doing rituals. Uh, you can see in fact, every time I go to Alta Vista, I can see the remains of Wichol or Cora rituals. These are used regularly to this day for rituals. Uh, um, this is called the Eye of God. They, they have various Christian and pagan. Uh, uh, it's, it's so interesting that Christians have no trouble uh, uh, worshiping at these pagan sites. Uh, whereas in Ireland, we, we, we have a dichotomy between Christianity and paganism, but there it, 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 it flows beautifully together. Yeah, th th these are Christian uh, angels, but they have no, no, no trouble putting it with the corn god. And, and this is separate ritual. Every time you go up there, you see the remains, smoldering ashes, and, 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 and ritual objects. Uh, little notes are written as prayers. 
uh, um, ritual objects, incense, candles. <coughs> that could be it now. This is a very interesting symbol uh, because it's in photography, even in the U.S. Southwest. Uh, this is a spiral. You can't see it too clearly here, but I believe when they do this, this represents time. The spiral represents time, and the cross represents space, and they see time and space as one thing. Now, with us, if even Newton didn't see time and space as fundamental and one thing, but they are advanced, and they see time and space as a unity, and they see it as, as, as a basic building block. So they're focused on time and space, and, and, and it's very clear that, that, that they see time and space as one and they see time and space as fundamental. It took us to Einstein, or near Einstein, before we, we, we began to realize that, that connection. Uh, there's a double spiral. There's three levels, Earth, Heaven, and the underworld, the cosmology. This is one of the sun, uh, stones that lights up simultaneously on equinox, uh, three different stones suddenly illuminate at the same time. This is one of them, and the sundial is another one. Where's that cross again? Here is something very interesting. These are the 20 day signs, and 20 day signs are multiplied by 13 to get 260. And 260 is the basic sacred round. It's called a soul king. And the 260 is so interesting because it's the period of human gestation, the nine months, 260 days nine month human gestation period, but it fits into cycles of the sun, it fits into cycles of the moon, it fits into cycles of Venus, Venus and other planets beautifully. And we have 20 digits. Fingers and the toes make 20 digits. We have 13 major joints, 13 major joints in the human body. 20 amino acid, types of amino acid in our human system. And we have 260 different types of cells in the human body. So this 260 is it, it, fascinating. It fascinates me. Did an individual come up with this? Or did somebody come over with a period of time? But these 260 days fit beautifully into the astronomical cycles and it fit beautifully into the, even the human body. Also, the days are time and space are the same, are viewed as the same thing. This is the east, north, west, south. So time and space are integrated in a very beautiful way. So each day represents a direction. Time and space are fused. Uh, by the way, here's today. Uh, that's where we are today. So you see yourself, if you keep this calendar, which I keep this calendar, and you keep this calendar, you integrate time and space <coughs> in yourself. This calendar is interesting and powerful, scientific, and it's gaining 
interest uh, uh, rapidly. People are beginning to do day keeping. I've been doing day keeping for years. It changes your whole life. It's fascinating. And I want to talk a little bit about day keeping. The main thing I want to say, what I did here, see they burned all the codices. They burned about 95% of the codices that it, probably 98% or more of the codices that exist, they burned them. So what I want to do is make new codices. And this, this I regard as sort of a textbook for Maya, for reading Maya, uh, uh, the basics. And uh, I just make a model, uh, like they assign each day to a direction. So what I did, and, and it assigned each direction to a color. So I, what I did was take them literally and put all the 20 days together in a sequence. And what do you get? You, you, you get a spiral. And you get the cross in the circle. And it explains the spiral of time and time, the unity of time and space. And, and each day sign has, has tremendous sig significance. This is one kind of arrangement. Uh, um, everything is kept in order, but it goes from east to north to, uh, to west, south, back to east. It goes around space and time are seen in an integration, and this gives you more of the idea of the spiral. And they interpret a spiral as being without beginning and without end. Forget about 2012 world coming to end. This, this, this is, in, they are seeing infinity. And, and these, these are the same sequence, but these also represent numbers. This, this, besides being a day sign, represents a number one, two, three, four. Uh, um, but it's, it's in the same s sequence. It's a spiral development of time. And the shell means zero. But this is tremendously useful for deciphering Maya codices because it's, it, it's the code of the codices. Uh, here it is a, I call this a cosmogram. This is the 260 day, 260 days are here. Each dot represents the day. And um, where we are, we're about here now. But when you're following the Maya calendar, you're following a time-space cosmogram. It unites time and space. Here they have the, the day signs for the north are placed here. These are the day signs for the south. These are the day signs for the east. This part represents the other world, the spiritual world. They put the spiritual world upside down. Uh, here are directions, east, north, uh, west and south. But with the 20 day signs, I don't know any other system uh, 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 of writing that all you have to do is learn the 20 day signs and the directions and you can just, you can read so many codices with, with, with about 30 glyphs. It's just amazing. You study Chinese, you have to study at least 1,200 different characters. But it's studying Maya if you study the 20-day signs and the four directions, you, you, you <coughs> read most of the codices that exist. Very convenient. Here's an Aztec version of the same thing. And, and, and they have birds and trees representing directions. Uh, and here is the, the warrior, the Aztec warrior. He makes war on judging things. And he makes war on the victim, um, um, the, the human being is a victim, no, the directions. Um, so they have the directions and the solstices defined by the sign. And if you look at the roof box in Newgrange, 
on the top they have that same kind of solstice design. Here is the, the, the Maya warrior, the peaceful warrior, and out of him is coming the 20 day signs. The 20 day signs are emitting, omitted from the body. When you do Maya uh, day signing, time is coming out of you. It's a very interesting experience. We experience time as coming at us. We get these uh, bloody Sundays, blue Mondays, black Sundays, frightful Fridays, and time is hitting us. And we're victims of time. This is, you're not a victim of time anymore. You rule time. Life, your life changes. When you start day signing, uh, you write each day down, you see time is coming out of yourself and it changes your entire life. Suddenly, you're not a victim. <coughs> you're using time for evolution. Uh, 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 and, and your life changes. And, uh, in Mexico and in the United States, gatekeeping groups are forming and the reason is and, 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 and people get together and do their day signing and they find out what's happening to their lives and people's lives are changing they're not getting sick anymore they're in control when you am I a day am I a day keeper doesn't get sick or, or, or life changes because you're you're no longer a victim of time you see time is coming out of yourself, and you see space is coming out of yourself. And, and the, when you wake up in the morning, uh, uh, you, you have control of time and you have control of space. And you see it as coming out of yourself. It totally changes your life. People and, and daykeepers get together and we compare notes about this. And, and people find that the, the Maya system is evolution, evolution, evolution of conscious get higher and higher. It's reaching, reaching higher and higher. So it, it, day keeping is a marvelous way of raising one's consciousness. And, 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 uh, um, the time and space are so fundamental. When you align with time and space and see time and space as coming out of yourself, your whole life is, is, is going to change. And, and you, you can end up in remarkable places. Uh, and the place where I live, I don't know, someone, some, someone came, came over to the computer, uh, the internet, said that I live in a hut. I live in a beautiful four-room house in a kind of paradise, uh, five minutes from the beach, and there are 360 different species of birds flying around, and there are 10,000 rock inscriptions. And, and, and uh, it's because of day keeping. And we compare notes with other day keepers, and they find out that they're not arguing with their wives. They're not. Uh, life changes when you see time and space as emanating for yourself, and you're not being a victim of time. You, in fact, you're using time as an ally to raise your consciousness. Uh, I, I'm coming out with a book called Days of Power. And, and read it. Because get, get a hold of that book. It'll be the best $20 you ever invested in. Uh, your, your, your life changes rapidly when you see time and space uh, uh, emerging for yourself. You, you, you become like the Toltec warrior. You're in control. You're no longer a victim. Uh -uh. And, and once you change, get out of that victim idea, uh, uh, life changes very, very quickly and remarkable things happen. You can get invited to Ireland to a conference. <laughs> you, you, you can get together with your relatives. Suddenly, you, 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 you have power. The more people that follow this calendar, that means the whole society advances. That's why in Mexico, we're fighting. We, we have a newspaper in Yucatec that prints the Maya Day, day count, the, the Maya Day sign. They're, they're printing that Maya Day sign every day. Now, more papers are going to print it, and now we're going to get a, the government to make the calendar official. And we're going to get as many people as possible day signing because it can raise the consciousness of the whole people. Forget about the doomsday. We don't, there's no doomsday. There is an evolution of our consciousness. And 
even more importantly, our group consciousness can raise through daykeeping. So daykeeping is spreading rapidly, not only in the United States, but it's happening around the world. And I s totally support it. And I would love it if Ireland will be the first country to congratulate Mexico uh, in recognizing the Maya calendar as official. And maybe the Irish government will recognize the Maya calendar as official for one day. But of course, one day means eternity. <laughs> uh, here's an interesting one. When you read these, as long as you know the day signs, you can start reading Maya text. This is an eclipse chart. And there's a lot of parts missing. But I figure from this, <laughs> I've reconstructed the entire, I've filled in all of this, and I've reconstructed the entire thing. And you know what? It comes out like the calendar stone that we saw animated. <coughs> it's the same period of time as the calendar stone. Uh, not, not the metonic cycle, but a, a five-year cycle. That's all uh, de demonstrated in this. And these are constellations. These are the Maya constellations, and, and this is the symbol of eclipse. Now this one was funny. I, I, I told you about uh, my book is about hand sign. But this simple hand sign <coughs> appears frequently. And I got a kind of explanation for it, but not the full explanation for it. So a few weeks ago, I'm walking down the road to my house and I re meet my friend Jose and he goes, Buenos dias Martin. Okay. Buenos dias Martin. And we go blah 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 he's talking and he said, okay, see you later. Hasta luego Martin. And I'm looking and he, he goes, Buenos dias, hello. And then he goes, goodbye. Oh, that's what they mean. That, they're still using the hand sign today. There, there it is in, in the codices. For those crosses, that the the Spanish didn't destroy the site uh, because they thought it was Christian, so 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 they, they stayed away from the site. <laughs> oh, the word Nayarit, thats the state that I leave, live in—is Nayarit. It derives from the word Nagual, and a Nagual is a shapeshifter. Uh, uh, so it's the state of the shapeshifters. And this is another thing we have in common between Mexico and Ireland. If you read the Toynbo Kulne, it's full of shapeshifting. And, and mytho Irish mythology, the Dagda is a shapeshifter. Uh, uh, so shapeshifting is, is, is very important in ancient Irish literature. And I'm happy to live in Nayarit uh, the, the, the state of the Nagwals. Uh, Nagwal is a shapeshifter. And by the way, in the calendar, you, 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 it's like a Nagwal calendar because they have a day for the eagle. Day for the eagle, you become an eagle. But the whole community becomes an eagle. It's fascinating. It is fascinating. <laughs> uh, here's, here's one of the frets. This is a, uh, <clears throat> a, a square squared off spiral and as soon if you look at now the entrance stone at now is that fretted spiral so I took a look at this and I say I, I this is an equinox thing I, I, I know that this is an equinox thing. <laughs> can you imagine 10,000 of these spirals it's wonderful Here's a page from my daykeeping book. I told you about the Hindu system of cosmology, the Maya system, the megalithic system. They all meet December 21st, 2012. Because in the Hindu system, what happens is Krishna leaves the planet, 
the Kali Yuga begins. So it's the beginning of the Kali Yuga, 3200 BC. Egypt, in Egypt, north and south unite. So we have the first country. The Sumerians start writing. Now all this happens around 3200 BC, New Grange. Uh, uh, uh. So these three systems pull together. When I do day signing, I put the day, the proper color, the color of the number, the color of the day, the month. This is called the long count. And then I put the saint. You've got to put the saint in. Uh, otherwise, if they think you're brutal, they get scared. In fact, the first thing I do when I go into a Mexican town, my horse, the first thing I do is go into the church. That calms them down. They're very superstitious people. A stranger comes to town, they get nervous. If you go into church, that calms them down. If you're keeping a calendar and you're not including the saints, they just get nervous about you. And you think they think you're powerful and they're afraid. <coughs> they're afraid of that stuff. It relaxes them when when when, when they see that Christian, that means they're, they're, you're not going to eat babies. <laughs> it calms you down. Anyway, it's a very good way to go. And then I, 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 I put it in Chinese characters. I always put the Gaelic in, and unbelievable, the Sanskrit alphabet fits into the Maya calendar like that. So each day, today is old. And tomorrow is silence. There's one day of silence. There are 52. Sanskrit letters, 52 sounds, but one of those 52 is silence. So tomorrow is silence, and it calls up winter solstice. Uh, but uh, uh, I keep the Sanskrit, so each day has a sound. Each day you night, say this day you night, you become a jaguar. You become the Sanskrit uh, 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 sound. And, and this is the long count. This is counting up to December 21st, 2012. This is going to change to 0, 0, 0, 0, and the 12 will turn to a 13. The day after December 22nd, 2012, is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. The, the, the big celebration is at the end. We celebrate New Year's first day of the year. They don't, they, they celebrate the last. <coughs> but uh, day keeping is a wonderful thing. So when I'm traveling, I didn't mean to show it, but I'm not sure. This is what I do when I'm traveling. Th this is my traveling day keeping. I keep the day every day. Why? Because it makes me happy and it changes life because you, you just have a completely different perspective of life. You're not the victim anymore. When, when space is coming out of you and time is coming out of you, you're seeing the world in a different way, you act in a different way, and different things start to happen to you. That's why people get together and form uh, day-keeping groups, because everybody keeps on time, but everybody relates their experiences, and it's remarkable how things change. And this was discovered by accident. Uh, we started in Massachusetts a, um, we started a Maya study group. And part of the activities were keeping the Maya calendar. And by accident, we discovered, hey, our lives are changing. And so we, we compare notes on how our lives are changing. But these day keeping groups are very strong in Mexico, but they're beginning to pop up a lot in the United States and really all over the world. Uh, um, so. <laughs> I'm looking forward to 2012 and December 21st uh, because I think it's going to be a big thing. The most important thing I think for us to do now, or for we to do now, is get rid of the doomsday idea and come in with the positive idea that, that December 21st, 2012 is going to be a time of great advancement for the human species. We need it. And uh, I am so happy to be here, so happy to meet new people and be together again with my brothers. 
Uh, the stone light mission continues. People think, oh yeah, we're, we, we, we did all these wonderful things in Ireland. Uh-uh, we're, uh, we're just getting going. Wait till we find out about aligned mocks, mosques in Arabia, alignments of synagogues. We don't know what's out there. We've been blindfolded. And it's time to take the blindfolds off and, and get into some reality. And especially, let's get into some positive thinking about December 21st, 2012. Uh, let's make it age of artists. Let, let's make it age of cosmology. Um, our idea, what we're pushing is art, science, spirituality moves to the front. We get art up there, we get science up there, we get spirituality, materialism, war, we don't need that. Uh, we're ready for a change. We're, we're ready for a positive change. So the doomsday thing, we, we, we have three years until December 21st, 2012. And we got a mission. We got a stone light mission. We're not taking this doomsday stuff. We don't need that doomsday stuff. We, we're looking for this as, a, and it'd be a great time for the advancement of the human race. And we got to get in some positive thinking about December 21st, 2012, because it, it is an opportunity to move forward. And the way we're going to move forward is take art out of the entertainment page. Artists need to get it straight that artists are not supposed to be decorating the walls of rich people's living rooms anymore. In ancient society, art was in front. That there were times in China, Song Dynasty, where to get into government, you had to be an artist. And these were times of peace and prosperity. There were great times of peace and prosperity in ancient India when artists were in the leadership. Not in the entertainment page, but in the leadership of society. Because society needs art, they need artists to, to lead them. When you put artists in the entertainment page, and you put down artists, you're losing out a lot. Because artists know how to harmonize. And, and, and between cultures, the culture has something, somebody asked me once, what was your most greatest or your most profound feeling uh, regarding your work. And I said, it was a day at Newgrange uh, when I noticed that there were Catholics and Protestants together. There was about 300 people outside Newgrange. And they all started saying, here comes the sun. So this was a cultural event for both Catholics and Protestants participating together. And that's run by artists. It's artists who did Newgrange. It's artists who recorded the Maya calendar. A new, Newgrange is the oldest building in the world. It's still standing. It's not a military base. It's not a bank. It's not a pub. It's a temple. Of, and the temple means peace, and the temple means harmony. It's time for artists to stop that entertainment stuff. Get out of the entertainment page, move to the front. Science has got moved. Science has problems too because science is ruled by materialism and they're trying to get them to discover nature's secrets for power and control. Uh -uh. Uh, they're not going to advance very far that way. Um, and spirituality, we support all religions. Uh, we, we, we support spirituality. So it's, it's those three uh, 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 achievements in art, science, and spirituality that we want to move forward with. I think it's going to take one year to get rid of this doomsday idea. Um, and I'm going to come out with my book, uh, uh, Days of Power, as soon as possible. I got much of, most of it done because uh, I'm going to reproduce my daykeeping journals. Um, so the book is already finished. <laughs> so uh, I expect to get out that book as soon as possible. But I'm hoping for one year to get rid of the doomsday idea and replace it. We got to replace. We can't just destroy the doomsday idea. We got to replace it with something else. And I want to replace it with more art, more science, more more spirituality, less war, less sickness, less greed, less waste. Let 
less materialism. Uh, and this is a good start. The war starts tomorrow. <laughs> and it's a war against ignorance. Uh, uh, I am so happy to be here. I'm so happy to see you. I'm so happy that Ireland is the same old country that I've always wanted to be. Thank you very much. <laughs>